Thank you, Jess. And good morning. As Jess said, uh, Nick and I have been asked to uh, to speak this morning about uh, how grain quality and safety interact. See, we're off to a good start. That's why we're not talking about operations here. Um, just some some uh, uh, some safety facts that I would like to share with you. Suffocation from entrapment is a leading cause of death in the grain bins. The primary cause of the of the primary cause leading to entrapment was entering a bin to loosen crust, crusted, spoiled, or frozen grain while the unloading equipment is uh, running. Over half the engulfment incidents uh, result in fatalities, and 69% of those happen on farms, while 31% occur on commercial uh, facilities. Some of the possible causes of, uh, are caused by grain spoilage. Um, some of the issues are bridging of grain, clipping, rat holing, a reclaim blockage, and also structural and uh, wall issues. First of all, bridging. Uh, what is bridging? You know, it bridging is when a crust uh, forms across the top of the grain, forming a bridge while a void develops uh, underneath. Uh, this is caused by poor quality, heating of grain, frozen grain. Uh, of course, the safety issues are if a worker walks on top of the bridge, it can break, causing them to fall in the void. Uh, there is slim chance of survival in this situation. Best practices, bridge, bridge grain can uh, be a serious problem to correct depending on the thickness of the bridge and also the size of the bend. Uh, every attempt should be made to work from outside the structure. Um, also, rescue teams should be in place and trained. They can be on-site rescue teams or, of course, some off-site. Um, from the time the auger starts or a conveyor starts, you, you, you have as little as two to three seconds to react. Um, in four to five seconds, you're trapped. After 11 seconds, uh, you're completely covered in grain, or you can be completely covered in the grain. Clipping. Clipping's another issue. Um, poor grain quality in just one area of the bend can cause a wall to form while unloading. Uh, this is caused by infestation, hot spots, high FM concentrations, or, or moisture. Uh, again, the workers can become buried when the wall of grain breaks loose, cause it causing an avalanche of grain to fall onto the workers or bury them. <coughs> excuse me, clipping. Um, since these walls can break loose at any point in time, it is best to work from a safe distance or outside the structure to knock the wall down. Here you can see a, a, a pretty good example of, of clipping and and um, how much how much grain can stand up to you know can certainly cause a problem. Also, um, as we go through, you know, the cliffing, it's also you can see that the natural angle of repose of the grain is, um, is pretty, it's beyond the natural angle of repose. So even if you don't see cliffing like you do in this picture, you can still have a hazardous um, condition if, the, if you're working below that and the grain, grain starts sliding. Uh, reclaim blockages are, are usually issues that are caused by large masses of clumps of grain uh, that pile over the, the sump hole or the draw off. Uh, roof leaks, open hatches, covers, broken crust, and high moisture can lead to the blockage of the reclaims. Uh, workers can be pulled into the flow of grain and become buried. 
best practice again is workers should never uh, try to dislodge a blockage a blocked reclaim from inside the bend while the uh, equipment is running rat holing uh, what, what we talk about is is tunnels that can form in the grain mass while the while reclaiming the grain this again is caused by high FM concentrations um, uh, high moisture or out of condition grain rat holes can lead to voids under the surface um, much like clipping and can cause avalanches uh, never enter into a bend to remedy this kind of condition e either uh, bend whips can are effective tools to um, to help combat that <laughs> Mole master didn't put that on there is it um, structural issues um, oh, excuse me this again is is uh, an, an example of of everything we've kind of talked about you can see the uh, the the cliffing uh, you can see the bad angle of repose on the grain and also in the in the lower uh, corner of the picture you can see where a rat hole has has developed or or um, is developing the, to go down to the slide structural issues and, and uh, poor quality out of condition grain sticks to the walls of the bin trapping moisture against the steel um, this is caused with high moisture out of condition grain corrosion on the bend walls and the structure can lead to failure of the structure over time uh, inspections of the uh, of the bends need to happen um, um, periodically or after each use to uh, correct those conditions a uh, little bit on the prevention side uh, proper cleaning temperature controls co2 levels uh, visual inspections should uh, are can all be used to prevent the uh, uh, spoilage of grain proper bend prep and cleaning inspections and repairs of the bends before filling can reduce the chance of grain spoilage Leaks in the roof and sidewalls are commonly found on bolded steel bends. Inspection of air ducts are vital to the proper aeration of the grain to reduce, to reduce hot spots. Um, air ducts can become filled with water, causing moisture to enter the grain, uh, or the, the, the holes on the aeration can become blocked, not allowing the proper airflow through the grain. Temperature controls and temperature sensors uh, systems have been used for decades to monitor grain systems can be very uh, basic or complex new advances have been added for to detect or to read moisture as well as levels in your in your tanks co2 can be a good indicator of the beginning stage of spoilage or infestation elevated levels above ambient can indicate a problem. Samples taken from the exhaust fans or in the headspace proved to be effective in capturing accurate CO2 levels in the, in the grain. Of course, visual inspection. Uh, look for change in the surface of the grain. Uh, high condensation in the headspace of the bin. Leakage from around the seams of the bin. The smell of rotten or sweet grain. Uh, around or in the bin grain cannot uh, and if grain is not unloading like it normally does always develop a solid plan before any work starts consult safety professionals if needed uh, plan for the worst have a safety or rescue team crew ready Conditions can change fast and uh, without notice. Ensure all involved are looking uh, at the whole situation and uh, always regroup and develop a new plan if necessary. Thank you.
thanks, Greg, and thanks, Jess and NGFA and Grain Journal for the opportunity to speak this morning. I'm going to continue to build upon what Greg said and continue to make some of these connections between safety and grain quality and talk a little bit more on the grain quality side. I want to start with a little quote that we share with every new plant manager and supervisor that comes through our training camp at Cargill. Come to me early with a problem and you'll have a partner in finding a solution. Come to me late with a disaster and you will have a judge. Think about that for a second. And as I kind of go through some of my grain quality presentation, think about what that might mean. If you, if you identify a problem and you know you have a quality concern, one of the best ways to avoid a safety problem down the road is get that in front of somebody. Make sure folks within your organization know that we have a concern or we have a problem or we have a risk that we need to address. And let's not wait until it gets to the point of disaster. I also want to share a quick snippet from uh, an article in Feed and Grain magazine that I found when doing a little bit of research on the intersection of grain quality and food safety. It comes from Bob Marlowe, who is speaking tomorrow or later today, I believe, on, on grain drying. And again, think about how this applies to your own operations, particularly as we just came out of wheat harvest in the southern areas and we're getting ready for fall harvest coming up within a few weeks. Grain quality problems have a compounding effect. For example, you're under the gun of a fast harvest. Some grain comes in too wet, some is high in fines. You crank up the heat on the dryer to keep the grain moving, but that can lead to increased BCFM. The smaller particles restrict airflow through your bins. Aeration and cooling are less effective than needed. You get mold in hot spots, fines settle and compress, resulting in crusts, bridging, which we heard about, that restricts or stops material from flowing and now you've got potentially a serious safety concern on your hand. Real quick, how many folks have been in that situation in your facility, under the gun of harvest? Every one of us, right? Grain's coming in a little too wet, doing a lot of drying, hot and fast, we end up with a lot more fines. We are creating a recipe for issues if we don't stay on top of it. So let's talk for just a couple minutes about some grain quality tenants. These are been are as have been published in Grain Journal. They come from Charlie Herberg at Iowa State University. Grain quality never gets better. The day that grain hits our facility and comes across our truck dump, that is the best quality it is ever going to be. Our whole goal in storing and handling grain through our facilities is to maintain that quality as best we can. And we'll talk about a couple of those tools through the rest of my presentation. I firmly believe moisture is the most important factor that you can measure. You can avoid a lot of quality risks and therefore safety risks by having accurate moisture and managing your moisture appropriately. I mentioned in that little snippet about aeration. Aeration will not correct incomplete or non-uniform drying. So if you have an issue with your dryer and it goes into the bin a little too wet or a little too hot, aeration is probably not going to be able to help you out of that situation. I also want to keep in mind that there is no silver bullet for grain quality monitoring. There are several tools available to us. You heard Greg mention a couple in terms of temperature sensors, CO2 monitors, uh, I'm going to talk about grain storage monitoring plans, lots of tools available to us in our toolbox, but there's no single tool that is the silver bullet and that says, yes, you have an absolute quality problem. However, as you put all of the information from the various tools together, you start to get a much more complete picture of what's happening in that storage and what type of steps you may need to take to either maintain quali grain quality or potentially deal with a grain quality issue. Poor quality grain is more costly to handle. Once that grain has gone out of condition, it's going to continue to be a problem to store and manage and it will cost more money both in time and effort and potentially in safety issues. Many aeration issues can be, can be corrected or eliminated by coring the bin, and we will see uh, an example of that a little bit later. Also, I'm a big and firm believer in if you don't inspect all of your inbound grain and understand what the quality is, you are not going to know what you have in storage. I dealt with a situation where a facility thought they were doing a good job on the inbound grading on soybeans. They went to load a train out and could not make the FM grade on their train. They went back and looked at their unloads and what do you think the FM was on every single truck they unloaded that fall? 
because that's where their discount started. As they dug into it, they found out that they weren't following proper grading procedures, and now they had a problem in their facility. And as I mentioned, once grain has gone out of condition, it is always going to be a storage risk. It's always going to be a problem to manage, and we need to be m mindful of that and have appropriate plans in place. So, as I think I mentioned, grain has one mission in life, to spoil. That's what happens, right? And as I said, the, the day that grain hits our facility, that's the best quality it's ever going to be. Our whole opportunity in the operations space, in the facility management space, is to manage that grain quality as best as we possibly can. Because what happens? Grain becomes moldy, it produces water, heat, CO2. We heard about the CO2 monitoring technology. And it becomes a self-replicating cycle. Right? The more heating you get, the more molding you get, the more moisture you get, the more heating you get, the more molding you get. It's a continuing cycle. And there's a lot of tools that we have available, we have available to help us manage that. So the first place I want to start is just with a little bit about storage monitoring plans. I think that's the basic place to start. And I kind of view it as you've got kind of four different ways you can kind of manage it. You can take the head in the sand approach and just hope for the best. Somebody within your organization may be trying the stick and the carrot. If you don't have a grain storage plan, you're going to get fired. You can maybe try and blunt force it and hammer something through. Or what I consider the most appropriate option, do you have a well-balanced, well-thought-out plan for managing the grain that you are storing and handling through your facility? So a couple comments about storage monitoring plans. We all have different types and styles of facilities. I bet for every person in here, we've got something unique about our facility, even though we all handle grain. So every plan is going to be different. The more detail that you can put into your plan, the more precise it's going to be. We always need to take into account changes in the plans, right? Who thought they were going to load a train out tomorrow only to find out that the freight didn't get lined up the way we expected? Or the merchant called and said, oh, carrying the market change and we're going to hold on to that grain for another 18 months, right? I see some people smiling and laughing because it's happened to all of us. And so we need to be cognizant of that because how we manage our grain in storage and how we keep our people safe is going to change. Do you have something in there about communication? I used that quote earlier on in my presentation. How are you informing folks within your organization of what the good quality is, when we have quality concerns, and when we need to take action? What about security? If you're, a if you're a federally licensed warehouse, the license agreement says you have to have a facility security plan. Have you taken security into consideration in your storage monitoring plan? Do you have remote ground piles or remote storages that someone doesn't see every day and isn't there to keep an eye on? And let's not also forget about the pending Food Safety Modernization Act, which also has regulations around facility security, intentional adulteration, and managing our storage. And this, this last bullet, it's what we call within Cargill our short overrun program. It's our guide to how we manage grain, both for quantity and quality as it moves through our facility. So do you have some sort of master document regarding grain inventory management in your facility? And so I've just provided a couple examples of storage monitoring plans. Take them, leave them, good, bad, otherwise. Just some examples. This first one happens to be for some concrete upright space. So temperature readings taken and will be reviewed on a weekly basis. Uh, temp systems automatically raise a flag when temperatures greater than 20, when there's a shift greater than 20 degrees. Aeration will be run to cool the grain. Or when a hot spot is discovered, grain will be turned if needed. I would say that this is probably, and I wrote this one, I'd say it's probably a mediocre example. Some pieces missing. How do I communicate it? Are there other tools that I might be using, et cetera? Just another one, I mentioned the remote flat. The flat will be checked for security each week at a minimum. All doors, gates, vents will be secured to prevent uncontrolled access to the flat. How many of us have remote ground piles that sit out in the middle of a field with no security around them? I know, I know, I know we have them, and it's always a concern. CO2 readings will be recorded every two weeks. We heard Greg talk about the benefits of CO2 readings. 
When filling the flat, samples will be collected to represent each 250,000 bushels of grain, and then will be sent for baseline mold testing and grading. So mold testing is another tool that I'm not going to talk about, but can, that, can, that can help manage grain quality during storage. And then, in, again, in this example, they'll probe the flat every 45, 30 to 45 days when safe to do so. If quality concerns arise, samples may be collected more often. So again, just a couple examples of storage monitoring plans and something to consider in your facility. <clears throat> I just got this picture yesterday, and I wanted to share it with the group, particularly as I was thinking about storage monitoring plans and contingencies. This happens to be a large storage tank in a facility along the Mississippi River that we thought was going to hold grain in through the spring and into the summer until the river flooded in December. How do you think our plans changed when that river started coming up on Christmas Day or thereabouts? All, right, all of a sudden, we went from a real well-defined plan to hold this grain into the spring and summer to having a tank with three feet of water in it. A lot of scrambling around talking about how we're going to change our plans. Also, as you can see, now we're into the end of July, and we definitely have a quality problem in this tank and clearly a big safety problem. Fortunately, we only had about three feet of water in this tank, but you can see the crusting and the bridging that Greg already alluded to. So now we're in a different mode of trying to both manage the quality and figure out what can legally be done with this grain and keep people safe while we try and remove the grain from the facility. So our plans change all the time. A couple other examples of some tools that are available to us. This is the slide says allowable storage time for corn. Also, the next slide is for soybeans. What I would say is this is a great tool to start as a guideline. And what you can see here is you look at the grain moisture versus the grain temperature. And where the two intersect is how many days of safe storage. In these examples, you can see there's just a couple circled to use to point out you can see the 165 days. That doesn't mean that on day 166, the corn in that bin has turned to crap. But it does mean that as you approach and exceed that time limit, you may start to see some quality degradation in that grain during storage. These are intended to display the time to go uh, decrease grain quality by one US standard grade, so from number two to number three. A great tool and should be taken into consideration when you start storing grain and work on your plan to hold it into storage. So a very similar example for soybeans, you can see the, the slightly shorter amount of days available. Again, a great tool to start the discussion. It's not the end all be all that means on day 96, those soybeans that you're holding in the bin are not going to be merchantable. Greg talked about temperature monitoring. I mentioned earlier grain spoiling, mold forming. This is a great little table or chart that's available that shows the rate of growth for storage molds versus the temperatures. And so again, another good tool to have in your back pocket on when you're trying to determine, should I run my aeration? Should I not run my aeration? How cool do I need to, be, need to get the grain to safely store it? And then likewise, I mentioned mold testing as a, as a good tool in your toolbox. This shows the moisture contents that some of the different common storage molds grow at. And so, again, we mentioned earlier on in the grain tennis that moisture is one of the most important factors you can measure. And you can see here, depending on what moisture you are, the different risk levels you have for molds growing and forming in your bin, which can, can lead to quality and safety issues. Who looked at that and said, oh boy, we got a problem. So this was a barge of soybeans. What we know happened was it was loaded with a high-low blend of moisture and sent down the river. Don't know how long it sat on the river, went into the facility to get discharged, and this is what they found. We've clearly lost the entire value of this barge. But what's the other piece? Now we've got to figure out what to do with it, right? We've got, a bin, we've got a barge that's smoldering, nearly on fire. Somebody took those covers off, 
right? They were down on that barge. They took those covers off. And now somebody's going to be involved in probably clamshelling that grain out of that barge. Who's got some safety concerns, right? Direct link of grain quality to safety. This is another storage structure where there was a hot spot that formed in the middle of it. And this wasn't a 30-foot steel bin. This was a large storage shed. And where do you think the hot spot was? About in the middle of the bin, right? We find out that there's a hot spot. Now we're putting guys and gals in payloaders many hours a day, working hard, working over the weekends, late into the nights, early in the mornings, trying to get the grain out to get to the hot spot. Does anybody see any safety concerns with that? Oh, and we're in a confined space as well. What we found out through some investigation, at least one of the concerns, was that there was potentially an issue with the dryer and the grain wasn't getting dried exactly the way we thought it was. It may have been putting some wetter or warmer grain into a part of the structure. And so now we've got clearly a quality concern. That was what it looked like. And now a safety concern because we've got to put people in that shorter structure to get that good corn out of the bin, to get to the damaged corn, to get it out of the bin. I mentioned earlier spout lines. If, if folks aren't familiar with the spout line, it's where the fines gather in the middle of the bin. It restricts airflow, and it, and it causes also potential quality problems and can lead to bridging or clipping. And so what we do, pull that spout line out, helps the airflow through the bin better, reduces those safety and quality risks. What I've added here is we talked a little bit about aeration. We do a lot of aeration in our business. The more fines there are in that storage structure, the harder it is to cool that tank. So what if you do start to get a hot spot? Or what if you do have higher moisture and you've got those high fines? Like in the little story I used at the beginning of the presentation. Now it's going to take longer to cool that takedown. And just a couple, yes, really old pictures that show how that temperature doesn't quite cool down as fast through those thick spots of fines. And again, just another illustrative, illustrative example that shows you get cooling, good cooling around the outside of that tank, but where that core or spout line is doesn't cool. And now we've got a quality risk. Likewise, when we look at aeration, this happens to be an example showing up air. You've got cool down grain on the bottom, put warm grain on it, pushing up air. You can move that cool front through the grain. But what if you don't get that cool front all the way through the grain? You get this white, where we've got the white layer here that has potential for crusting, which could lead to potential for bridging. So are we, do we understand and do we manage our aeration as we're using it to cool the grain in our facility? Similarly, this is showing an example with down air where you could actually have two areas where we have risk for bridging and quality concerns if we don't pull that aeration front all the way through the grain mass. And again, just another example of what could happen. Now we've got a grain quality concern, and as we go to pull that grain from that bin, we could have the bridging that we talked about, we could have cliffing, or we could have a case where chunks break loose and plug the spout. And now we've got a safety concern, someone who has to get that grain out of the bin. One of the discussions I have a lot of times with folks when I run my aeration, I get my grain cooled down, do I cap the fans or do I not cap the fans? I'm a big fan of capping the fans because it stops that airflow through the bin, the convection currents that move through the bin. Because what can happen? You can start to get crusting around your fan. And Greg mentioned the aeration, your ducting gets plugged, and now you don't have effective airflow. If you don't have effective, effective airflow while storing your grain, now you've got increased quality risks. And of course, I have a picture of that. So not only do we have problems with the airflow, but when we get that tank empty, now someone has to go in there and clean all of that crusted and moldy and rotten grain up. And so again, we're putting someone in a confined space in a risky environment that we have to manage. Also, we've talked a lot about bridging. And so here's another example of understanding how the grain stores in our facility. And what it shows is 
as we move through the seasons, there's still some air movement through that bin from the natural heating and cooling of the bin walls and the convection currents. And so what can happen is, as the air moves through that bin, you can actually get points of spoilage or molding or crusting right at the, n at the surface of the grain or worse yet, just below the surface where you can't quite see it. And so what if you have that condition, you pull some grain from that bin, and now you send someone in on top of that grain and we don't know that it's crusted over, right? We saw from Greg how quickly that can turn into a disaster. And just from the different seasons, the, the convection currents flow different ways in the bin. And some pictures of what that may look like. And again, when that crust breaks up, now we've got the risk of it plugging spouts, and we have to figure out a way to get that grain out of that storage structure. That just shows the grain breaking up. Do you think this location had a good storage monitoring plan? Probably not. Or worse yet, they may not have had a good plan for rotating stocks in their bin bottoms. And now we've got a case where clearly a total loss of the value of the grain, but we also have to get it out of the bin now. And what do you think that, how engaged do you think your team is going to be when we have to get that grain out of that bin? Again, we're in the confined space. We've got risk of spouts plugging. Clearly, both a grain quality and food safety concern. And again, you can see the grain is a total loss. But maybe had there been a little bit more effort and time spent on grain quality management, the storage monitoring plan could have been in a situation where the facility could have avoided a condition like this. So we heard it mentioned this morning. I think John mentioned it this morning. We share this all the time within Cargill. At the end of the day, we want to do everything we can to maintain the quality of grain as it moves through our grain facility. And we want to ensure that everyone who comes to our facility each day goes back home safely at the end of the day. That's our ultimate goal. I'd like to take just a moment to share very briefly. I've personally been impacted by this. A gentleman that I worked with was joking with him one night, got a phone call the next morning. He had been engulfed and killed and it was because of a grain quality issue, went in to unplug it, and, and he was engulfed. And so it is serious business, it is very sobering, and we do wanna keep people safe as they come to our facility and work each day or visit our facility. And we also wanna maintain that grain quality so that we can avoid putting people in those situations. So with that, I'd like to just leave you with a few questions to ponder. Are you training and informing your team on the importance of grain quality? Do you have some sort of program to help folks understand what quality means for you and for your business and your facility and what tools we have to maintain it? Are you doing everything you can to monitor and manage quality? Are you looking at those tools that are in your toolbox, using them to the best way to fit your facility and managing quality as best as possible? Does your team understand why, how, how quickly a quality issue can turn into a safety issue? I've shared lots of examples. Greg showed lots of pictures as how quickly we can have a quality issue that becomes a very serious safety concern. And then when you do have quality concerns and safety concerns, do you have policies and procedures in place to deal with them? Greg talked about the emergency responders, whether they are on site or uh, a business partner in the area? Do you have contingency plans when your storage plans are going to change? What is your plan? How are you going to manage grain quality and safety in your facility? And I think we've got a couple minutes for some questions. Are there any questions from the audience for, uh, for Nick or Greg? Comments? Okay, well, I think this is uh, Nick and uh, Greg, appreciate it. Thank you very much.